let's continue to read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. Jesus is love. Jesus is love. This is um, this is amazing. How and this is a very well known for first First Corinthians thirteen four. It's amazing. The whole section is. I'm going to read it again. Um, bringing past to present. Listen to the words that the Holy Spirit has given Paul to tell us. To tell us. Think about it in your relationships. Think about it in your daily life. Think about it in, in your interactions with others. Think about it in what it means to you and what impacts you may have as well. Even if you can't get out and about, you still have an impact. You still have a journey with the Lord. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Exactly. And who is our Savior? All of these things. And it goes to show the verse, his banner over me is love, because that's who Jesus is to us. He is love. And he wants us to be reflections of him. And he knows. And he knows how difficult and hard because we want to control things. We have our own thoughts and feelings. We have our own self wants and desires. And Jesus knows. And he wants us to push that away. Push that away. And listen to what he has. And listen to what's in store. And praise him. And give him thanks. And I know even myself, uh, there are times in my life where I feel like I'm getting unfocused, where I feel like I'm getting off. Like there were, I mean, as of recently, um, I feel sometimes where I'm just getting off and I'm, I I know I have to turn back to the Lord and I have to be patient as well. I can't just demand, Lord, answer, answer why I feel troubled. Why, why I don't feel the Holy Spirit right now. That is not my decision to make. That is something to seek, to ask the Lord, hey, God, bring bring the Holy Spirit back, bring that joy back, bring your peace back, and understand and know that it's coming, and that it's here, and that it's everlasting. But it's also a way for me to refocus, to for me to put aside those worldly, earthly, humanistic things. 
Because time and time again, our minds go astray. We're just like sheep. We are just like sheep. How easy it is to distract a sheep. How easy it is. Think about those things. Before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? When we read over this, how does it make you feel and what does it make you think?